if he does not have funds uh, to pay off the judgment, uh, then we will seek, uh, you know, judgment enforcement mechanisms in court, and we will ask the judge to seize his assets. Hi, everyone. It is 5 o'clock here in New York. I'm Alicia Menendez, in for Nicole Wallace. And that was New York Attorney General Letitia James putting the disgrace, twice impeached, four times indicted ex-president on notice that his pride and joy, his real estate empire, is fair game, telling ABC News that she will seize those assets if Trump fails to pony up the massive amount of money he must now fork over in the wake of Judge Ngoran's decision in the civil fraud trial here in New York. A decision the New York Times described as a, quote, crushing defeat that could cost him all his available cash, a total that when all is said and done could exceed $450 million. New York AG Tish James is now saying in no uncertain terms that if Trump cannot pay up, she will not hesitate to move in on Trump's assets. She will seize the buildings that bear his name and hinting that she's already thinking about where to start. We are prepared to make sure that the judgment is paid to New Yorkers. And yes, I look at 40 Wall Street each and every day. She looks at 40 Wall Street, quote, each and every day. Now, imagine you are Donald Trump. You are staring down this massive bill that is coming due. The reality of that warning from New York AG Tish James is sinking in. And you know that if you can't pay up, she's coming for your precious buildings. If you are Donald Trump, you might understandably, for lack of a better term, be sweating it. Well, here's what that looked like last night during a Fox News town hall. Now, in this New York civil fraud case, this Judge Arthur Engeron ruled against you for almost a half a billion dollars plus interest that runs every day. When I first read this, like $87,000 a day. How would you put up that kind of money because you have a bond to put up? Even if, if you appeal, you've got to put up escrow money. That's uh, uh, it's a lot it of dough. It is a dough. form of Navalny. It is a form of uh, communism or fascism. No, let's be clear. It is nothing short of revolting to compare his many, many self-inflicted legal woes to the murder of Alexei Navalny, a murder that Trump still refuses to condemn Vladimir Putin over. But what if it is also a sign that the looming fine in the New York civil fraud case and the possibility that Tish James could seize his beloved buildings has finally gotten under Donald Trump's skin? And that is where we start this hour with former U.S. attorney and former deputy assistant attorney general Harry Lippman. Also with us, former congressman from Florida and current MSNBC political analyst David Jolly. And here with me at the table for the hour, former top State Department official and MSNBC political analyst Rick Stengel. Harry, I want you to walk us through where we are in the countdown to when Trump must pay up, whether in the form of a bond or otherwise. So when 30 days runs, about another 20-some, he, if he wants to appeal, and that's his right, he's got to pony up that bond. And you can think of it like a criminal defendant who has an enormous bond. If he doesn't have it in cash, he'll have to make deals with people and have collateral and the like. But what happens at the end if he refuses to pay? Tish James could be very soft-spoken as she was in there. The sab she's rattling sabers, but it's really the law saber here. It's straightforward. Prosecutors do it every day. Federal offices have departments just for asset forfeiture. There's ways to do it with the court. You can't squeak, take blood from a stone. But if he has assets and won't pay cash, you go to court and you say, we would like these, please, and you seize them. End of story. So it's a very tangible indeed kind of routine uh, mechanism for defendants who will not pay up. So it's a very serious kind of threat. Nothing uh, bombastic about it. Rick, ABC News calculated that Donald Trump owes more than $87,000 a day. You, you heard that there, just an in interest until he pays the full fine. There is a question of where that money is going to come from. And there are those who have suggested that it opens up a security risk, right? Here you have someone who is cash-strapped, who we know doesn't want to liquidate his assets, which is what he's going to need to do in order to make this payment. Given that he is running for president, when you step back, and you think of it not just as a legal issue, but as a national security interest. What what's, does that say to you? Yes. When, you know, when they're doing a background check on you before you go into the mm -hmm. State Department, you become a diplomat, one of the things they look at is how much debt you have. Because the debt is something that could be used and was used during the Cold War to blackmail people. Uh, Nancy Pelosi, just last week, 
mentioned that she thought that Donald Trump had something, that uh, Vladimir Putin had something financial on Donald Trump. So uh, it will make him even more reckless than he is. And by the way, he's always exaggerated his wealth. I mean, he used to be on the phone pretending to be someone else to Forbes magazine saying why he should be listed as X kind of billionaire and what number. That is the kind of guy we're talking about. So, David Jolly, if we know anything uh, about Donald Trump, it is that he almost pathologically doesn't like to pay people unless he absolutely has to. He deeply cares about the optics, as we just heard from Rick Stengel. He has to pay, pay or he has to face the optics of a building with the name Trump being bolted to the side, being seized by Letitia James. I just, what is going through his mind, do you think, right now? Yeah. Yeah, Alicia, this is going to happen. It's just a matter of when, not if. I mean, the likelihood, Harry could opine on this, but the likelihood of Donald Trump somehow winning on an appeal uh, is very slim. So get the TV cameras ready and get the popcorn ready because we might all watch Donald Trump lose his real estate empire and the Trump name come off of buildings. And I think what's going through his mind, this is the fascinating thing. We, we often conflate all of the legal proceedings against him, but this is one that he cannot remedy simply by being elected president. This civil judgment in New York that Letitia James has sought is not something that Donald Trump, should he be elected, has the power to undo. This is not a federal case. This is not a criminal culpability case. This is something that Letitia James and, and the criminal justice or civil justice system in New York exclusively holds the remedy for. And I think that is the panic that's setting in. Sure, he's being exposed as a fraud, but even if he can manipulate the storyline around Donald Trump now being exposed as a fraud, what really hurts is the wealth and the loss of his wealth, and that's why you see the panic. Well, Harry, to pick up on that point, you've written about just how devastating the Angoran decision was for Trump, not just in terms of the money, but existentially. You wrote, quote, the opinion also constitutes a body blow to the brand that Trump has spent a lifetime mythologizing. Titans of commerce don't tend to cough up huge fraud judgments or ask anyone's permission to write a check. The extent to which the Trump brand is propped up by lies has always been open to question. After Angoran's verdict, the brand is propped up by even less. If Ch Tish James does in fact seize one of his buildings, what, what kind of body blow is that for Trump, for the brand? Yeah, you know, as as always, what David said, um, and just, you know, I mean, just think about the day and the, and the bowls of popcorn as the big Trump name comes down from Trump Tower, and I don't know, Empire State uh, goes up. I mean, it is really, he, he uh, always exaggerates his brand, but there are indicia of it, names everywhere, uh, certain kind of gold, that goes away. He's just a, a uh, you know, one other guy on the street, a, a, a former wannabe real estate tycoon. And the brand, really, he spent a lifetime building, I think, next to his liberty is the thing he wants to preserve. And his odds of doing it, as David just said, are have really plummeted. Here's the thing, David Jolly, which is the four of us, our audience, everyone understands that this is disgorgement, that this is the return of ill-gotten profits. But that's not the story he's going to be out there telling, right, David? He's going to say, look at the government taking away what I spent a lifetime building. He is going to weave this into a false narrative that his base is likely to buy hook, line and sinker. Yeah, sadly and disgustingly, I think the Navalny analogy is going to stick in Republican parlance. You saw Newt Gingrich kind of trial balloon it even before uh, before Donald Trump grabbed it and used it. So this is taking victimhood not just to the, to the absurd, but to the disgusting. And they would say to Donald Trump and Republicans this, if you truly think that Donald Trump was being exposed to the same level of criminal justice that Putin has used for Alexei Navalny, Tish James would have already pushed Donald Trump out of a high story window. Uh, this, is, there's, this is apples and oranges. Navalny had a secret trial where the evidence was not given to him. He was charged with essentially speaking out against the ruling regime. That is not this case. This is a case of fraud where Donald Trump lied about his finances, lied about his records to secure loans he otherwise wasn't qualified for, cheating the system and ultimately cheating taxpayers. But Donald Trump will use this as victimhood. But the good news here is when we see this happen, sure, it works to ramp up intensity among Republicans. It is not a, an effective general election message. Yeah. It simply isn't. And it focuses in for Donald Trump on all the wrong issues when it comes to general election voters. 
What did you make of that Navalny comment? I thought it was an obscenity. I mean, uh, Navalny, one of the most courageous freedom fighters in human history, came back to challenge a dictator. Donald Trump supports that dictator. In his criticism of what happened in Navalny, he didn't mention Putin once. Uh, you know, Navalny was trying to win freedom for his people. Trump used the freedom he had to fleece people. I mean, it couldn't be more opposite. Uh, I hope it has some resonance in the general election campaign, uh, despite what David said, because it's just, it's, it's really appalling. Today